So in this video we're going to be looking at this camera, that's the Concorde 3045 from 2005. Now I know what you're thinking, never heard of it. Based in Hollywood, that's Hollywood, Florida, not La La Land, Concorde made affordable cameras under many brand names including Accomplishments, Concorde, Concorde IQ, Fun Shooter, Easy Shot, you get the idea. They produced loads of cameras under loads of different brand names. None of them really were household names. They also produced many cameras for stores own brand labels and also for a short while produced cameras under the Polaroid and Genoptics brands. The specs for this camera in 2005 weren't groundbreaking by any means but they weren't that far off what the likes of Canon, Nikon and Sony were offering in the £200 compact camera market. Looking at the front of the camera it's your average compact camera fare with a flash, lens and viewfinder and decoration of its pixel count of course was the norm in the noughties so it's got a proudly displays a sticker listing all of its main features. The lens is fixed and has an f-stop ranging between 2.8 and f8. The focal length is 47 millimeters and we do have the option of a mm, lovely four times digital zoom. That's going to make the picture quality fantastic. It does have a macro and wide mode setting which is available via a switch on the side of the camera. Overall the camera is very much a light affair weighing in at 100 grams without batteries and feels unsurprisingly plasticky. The body features a curved end on one side to attempt some kind of ergonomics along with a thumb grip on the back but that shiny silver paint is so typical of the time it's far too slippery to obtain a real firm grip. On the back of the camera we have the viewfinder, a one and a half inch screen, buttons to select the self timer, burst mode and zoom in and out with that wonderful four times digital zoom. I'll be quite honest, the camera does actually have more features than you would expect in such a cheap and cheerful camera. Using the mode dial on the top of the camera we can move the camera out of auto and put it into manual where we can change things like the white balance and alter the exposure of the image. We can also set the date and time of the camera. We can also switch off all those really irritating beeps this thing makes. A swift twist of the mode dial and we're into the video mode which is quite exciting for 2005. Now, we're going to be shooting in AVI video at a maximum resolution of 640 by 480. Wow. Best feature, or possibly worst in reality, is the fact that you can record your own voice using this little device. That's right, if you want to sound like a Cyberman from Doctor Who trapped in a linen closet, then this is the camera for you. This is a test. How does this camera record your voice and how does it sound? As was typical of the time, this camera can also be used as a webcam and connect directly to your PC. It even sports a little tripod mount. So that's enough waffle from me, there's only one thing left to do, let's take it out and shoot some photos. So I'm out this morning with the Concorde camera and we're going to see what kind of photographs we can get with it. It's midday, there's plenty of light in the sky and it's overcast so hopefully not too much in the way of harsh shadows for the camera to try and cope with. And we'll see what 3.1 megapixel images on this little Concorde camera actually look like.
home after the trip out with the little Concorde and well what did you think? I thought the images came out pretty good considering this is only a 3 megapixel camera. The macro setting is a little bit of a misnomer. If you get too close to your subject then you'll find that the images will be out of focus. That said when you do nail the focus the images are quite sharp, nicely detailed and the colours are vibrant. In the wide angle mode the images were different again. Now usually in a cheap point and shoot you tend to expect blown out highlights, that type of thing. This was a different setup on the Concorde. Um, it seemed to latch onto a sky quite easily and expose for that sky correctly but obviously you would then find that anything on the ground was a little dark. All of the images in this video have not been treated in Photoshop in any way. They are straight off the camera JPEG so those colours are pretty good. As I say with the wider shots you do get that sort of slightly darker look to the images uh, something that could obviously be addressed in post if you wished. On the whole I didn't think the Concorde 3045 was that bad. I thought the image quality was quite good um, especially with a camera of its era. Certainly better than the Lego camera I tested a few weeks ago even if it doesn't look quite as cool. Let me know what you think of the images in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up it really helps the channel out a lot. So if you've really enjoyed this video why not watch one of the two videos appearing on the screen now. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel just click on my face in the middle of the screen here. And if you'd like to support the channel I do have a buy me a coffee link which is in the description and you can donate to that. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.